Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. We've been talking in our series about the health benefits of fasting. And we have been going in some detail through a variety of health parameters, if you will. Weight loss, um, diabetes control and diabetes risk factors, cardioprotective health, immune system health, oxidative stress. And now we want to take a brief look at the impact of fasting on cancer. And of course, I'm aware some of you may be wondering why in the world do we have to go into this level of detail, learning about interleukin-6 and learning about the mTOR, you know, protein complexes. Uh, and my answer to that is we don't have to. Uh, I am assuming that as Muslims, again, interested in beholding and admiring some of the wonders that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, we would want to take a little bit of a look beneath the surface. Uh, some of you may be thinking, well, why not just give me the bottom line? Well, I already did. That was the first lecture of the bottom line. Fasting is very good for you, both in human data and animal data. The obeying of the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the religious and spiritual level turns out, through His mercy, to have numerous health benefits as well. But I am hoping that you have stayed with us to look at some of the specifics really as, as an act of illumination and I would consider it uh, almost as an act of worship. Um, thinking, be thinking of the miracle of creation uh, that, that uh, is inherent in, in all of these cascades as to how fasting helps us. So, now, enough, uh, I guess, uh, proselytizing or philosophizing, cancer. So, a series of studies in animal models have shown that periodic fasting can be as effective as chemotherapy in delaying the progression of a wide range of cancers. So, this is an amazing statement, again, from this serious medical journal, that fasting can be as effective as chemotherapy and... More importantly, it can protect normal cells from the toxic effects of chemotherapy drugs while making cancer cells more sensitive to treatment. So, of course, we're not going to tell anybody who, God forbid, has cancer, oh, no, don't take chemotherapy, just go ahead and fast. But fasting has been shown to make chemotherapy more effective against cancer cells and to protect normal cells from the toxic effects of chemotherapy. And a severely restricted diet can also mimic uh, the effects of fasting uh, in uh, causing major reductions in tumor incidence, delaying tumor onset, and reducing the number of sites where metastases occur. So fasting and calorie restriction have both been shown to be very beneficial from a cancer standpoint. Now, we do not have any significant data on the effects of fasting on cancer rates in humans. The stuff I quoted before was from animal data, animal tumor models, but we have good reasons to believe that fasting would be very beneficial on cancer rates in humans. I'll show you a little bit more data later, uh, but weight control is likely to reduce the risk of at least 13 cancers that are linked to obesity. And again, insulin, cytokines, inflammatory-related molecules, uh, leptin, adiponectin, all of these things, their improvements by fasting would be expected to reduce the incidence of obesity-related cancers. Furthermore, reductions in what is known as IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor, uh, are reported in normal and overweight subjects who follow an intermittent fasting diet. And these reductions in this growth factor help prevent tumor cell growth. So in the, the insulin-like growth factor, here's an article from the Harvard Gazette. Uh, there's a blurb about how growth factor raises cancer risk and high levels of the IGF-1 have been shown to significantly increase the risks of colorectal cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer. And 
we know that fasting significantly reduces the IGF-1, so it should help protect against these cancers. And here is uh, an, articles, an article from the Proceedings of the Nutritional Society uh, from 2011, again, making the point that uh, IGF-1 has been associated with risks for breast cancer and prostate cancer, uh, you know, first or second most common cancer in women, most common cancer in men, and the levels of IGF-1 uh, are related to these cancers, and fasting improves IGF-1, reduces IGF-1 levels, as we have talked about. From this source, we know that uh, fasting has been shown to have several beneficial effects on metabolism that may lead to a reduced risk of cancer. We've said that human studies are limited, but that animal data is extremely promising, and there is now evidence on human cancer patients that fasting reduces the various effects, the side effects of chemotherapy. So intermittent fasting has been shown to help prevent cancer in animal studies, and one paper in humans shows that it reduces the side effects caused by chemotherapy. Now let's move on to brain health. We know that usually what's good for the body is good for the brain. And it turns out that fasting has significant health benefits in terms of our brain health. Again, the reduced oxidative stress we've talked about, the reduced inflammatory markers, the reduction in blood sugar levels, reduction in insulin resistance. All of those are very positive for us. And again, the benefits for brain function, we've talked about how Fasting helps increase the levels of the brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF, and a deficiency of this has been implicated in depression and various other brain problems. And so intermittent fasting can have many important benefits for brain health, um, including growth of new neurons and protecting the brain from damage. In fact, intermittent fasting may definitely help prevent Alzheimer's disease. So... Um, some case reports, lifestyle interventions that included daily short-term fasts, were able to improve Alzheimer's symptoms in a vast majority of patients. The animal studies are extremely impressive regarding the effects of fasting on neurodegenerative diseases, including, of course, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and Huntington's disease. So... Um, Part of the degeneration and death of neurons that occurs in these neurodegenerative diseases is probably due to impaired mitochondrial function due to oxidative damage, something known as impaired lysosome functions. Lysosomes are what help digest unwanted proteins in the cells and dysregulation of calcium metabolism inside the cell. When rats were maintained on alternate day fasts for several months, prior to the administration of a neurotoxin, something that kills neurons in the brain, their hippocampal neurons are more resistant to degeneration. Uh, my hippocampal neurons must have degenerated a little bit because I have this dangling end. Please ignore that. But it is the neurons of the hippocampus that are most damaged in Alzheimer's disease. The hippocampus in the brain sits in the temporal lobes and functions as one of the seats of generating and laying down new memories and damage to the hippocampus is very very specific and common in alzheimer's disease and fasting has been shown to lessen hippocampal damage um, when toxins are administered also there is a drug known as mptp a synthetic heroin that has been shown to mimic the effects of parkinson's disease and in fact uh, there was an epidemic among the human population, people trying this recreational drug who ended up at a very young age with very severe Parkinson's disease. It turns out that mice who were maintained on alternate day fasts are significantly more resistant to the damage caused by this drug, which kills off the dopaminergic neurons, the neurons in a part of the brain known as the substantia nigra. It is loss of these neurons that are felt to lead to Parkinson's disease in the human. So fasting prevents damage to these dopaminergic neurons. Now, Alzheimer's disease in animals is studied in what are known as transgenic mouse models. So they are 
mice that are genetically engineered to generate the protons, especially beta amyloid and tau, these abnormal uh, proteins build up in what are known as tangles and plaques inside the neurons of our brain. And it is this excessive buildup of beta amyloid and tau that are felt to probably be at the heart of Alzheimer's disease. And when these transgenic, transgenic mouse models of Alzheimer's disease were maintained for one year on either calorie restriction or alternate day fasts, they did not develop the cognitive impairment that was shown by the same transgenic mouse models that were fed ad lib, fed the way normal mice would be fed. So in fact, this regimen helped prevent Alzheimer's disease in mice genetically engineered to have Alzheimer's disease. I can't really uh, find a more impressive result than that to share with you. And so in conclusion, from the Matson article in Aging Research Reviews, Fasting enhances brain health. Synaptic plasticity, enhanced cognition, enhanced neurogenesis means we can keep our neurons more healthy, reduced inflammation, enhanced autophagy. We've talked about a lot of these things. It helps our heart health, decreased resting heart rate, increased heart rate variability, decreased blood pressure. It helps us in reducing so many uh, factors like glucose, insulin, leptin, total cholesterol, tumor necrosis alpha, we've talked about uh, tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin-6, other markers of oxidative stress, IGF-1. We increase our insulin sensitivity. We increase uh, our autophagy to keep our muscles more healthy. Uh, we mobilize our fatty acids, get rid of toxins, reduce inflammation. So fasting, in summary, has a very, very wide array of health benefits. Once again, that's not why we fast. We are fasting in obedience to the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as our forefathers, both in Islam and in monotheism in general, have done to enhance our spirituality, to attain taqwa and God consciousness, to make us more conscious and sympathetic to the poor, to the indigent, who fast not by choice but out of necessity. But it is God's mercy upon us that the system of amazing complexity that he has created in human and animal biology and physiology also benefits from fasting. And I've tried to give you uh, a, a more detailed look than usual than just the simple bottom line that, hey, fasting will make you healthy. Uh, and I hope... That, that this look has been illuminating, and I wish all of us a blessed, spiritual, and healthful, healthful Ramadan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa